Welcome to Focus on Health, a series of educational programs highlighting current health issues sponsored by the Department of Nursing at Salisbury University. I'm Dr. Mary DiBartolo, Professor of Nursing at Salisbury University and host of the program. I welcome back a very special guest and that is Dr. Greg Allen. You are Vice President of the Maryland State Dental Association and General Chair of the Eastern Shore Mission of Mercy. So we decided it's time to do a show about this very important community event that um, completed in April of 2015. Yes. And it was such a tremendous success. And we just want to toot the horn for this wonderful event and of course the people behind it and tell people a little more about it and then when the next event is held and so on. So let's talk about Eastern Shore Mission of Mercy. What exactly is it in concept? Uh, Eastern Shore Mission of Mercy is, a, is one of several uh, Mission of Mercies that are held across the United States. Um, this will be the seventh event I believe held in the state of Maryland, the second one here on the Eastern Shore. Uh, Mission of Mercy is something that originated down in Virginia uh, with a man by the name of Terry Dickerson who really put this whole um, force into action. Uh, it was initially designed to treat the underserved populations of the state, people who, who can't afford uh, dental treatment, who don't have means to do so, um, people who are struggling uh, to make, you know, make ends meet these days. And you know, this has been a very successful Mission of Mercy. We're really excited and proud about what's happened here on the Eastern Shore. And I think one of the key concepts that underlies it, it's a safety net event. Yeah. What exactly does that concept mean? Again, that's a safety net event is, is, is set in place. Uh, the Maryland State Dental Association um, uh, several years ago um, uh, kind of redirected part of our, our, our resources to set up a charitable education foundation, which is um, a division of a Maryland State Dental Association that is trying to help the underserved populations in the state of Maryland. That's where the Mission of Mercy, uh, with affiliated with the Maryland State Dental Association, really evolved from. So th we're, we're doing our best to try to catch people who would normally fall through the cracks. And right now, dental coverage uh, in the United States, and specifically in the state of Maryland, is not that great for adult patients. We do have resources in place for children. Here on the Eastern Shore, there's actually two federally qualified health centers that take care of most of the needs here on the shore with kids. Um, but you know what we're seeing is as the economy started to stagnate in 2008 or 2006, um, more and more people are in need of dental services that can't afford it. Well, we know medical care is in the same boat, and we're just thrilled when people can get access to medical care. And of course, dental care seems to be a luxury, and it shouldn't be. It is, and, and there's more and more links, Mary, between uh, medical, between people being healthy, generally healthy, and, and dental treatment. We know for a fact that there's a, there's a strong correlation between heart disease and periodontal disease or gum disease in patients. There's a, there's a strong correlation between development of um, of uh, everything from spontaneous abortion in young women, um, heart attacks, um, it even goes to, to uh, general health. As a general rule, if your teeth are healthy, your body is more likely to be healthy in many ways. Um, and it also goes to, to, to the social impact, uh, you know, to, to be able to smile and to have that self-confidence, which a lot, a lot of, of times is, a, is the driving force to get people to come in to see me in my private office. So the more we can do to help, help this population of people out there you know, it, uh, it succeed and excel, and that's, that's what we should be here for. And the general recommendation for people is to see a dentist twice a year, so right. um, I guess it's a problem. People can't get there at all. There can Absolutely. be tremendous consequences. I, I actually saw a patient at this last Mission of Mercy um, in the surgical area that had not had dental treatment in 22 years, uh, which makes you really think, you know, if, if, there, if, if things had went that far in their mouth, uh, you know, I, I'd start, you know, worrying about their, their their general health, their heart, their lungs, their you know, diabetes. And, uh, and I think down the road is what we're going to see in future Mission of Mercies. We're going to start using this Mission of Mercy event not only to, to treat the dental needs of the patients, but also to find some resources for referral for things like diabetes uh, education, for you know, d uh, checking blood pressures, things like that, which I think is an integral part of this as well. So blood pressure screening. And Absolutely. And, and, and I think the next Mission of Mercy, um, we're going to be able to do that. Well, each time it seems to get bigger and it better. Does. It does. So We're getting more, more organized. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know you get practice doing it. And I know yeah. 2013 was your first one. Yes. Um, yeah. You held it in March. Yeah. 
And what were the numbers then, and then compare them to the numbers of this one? The first mission of Mercy, we treated um, uh, about 1,000 patients. This time, we treated well over 1,200 patients. Uh, we've also, the first mission of Mercy, we also included an eyeglass portion, so there is some ophthalmologic type things going on as well. Um, so some vision screening? Vision screening, and as well as glasses. Uh, I believe there were over 2,000 pairs of glasses available, and I think they gave out over 350 pairs of glasses at this last mission. Um, so it, it's getting better and better. We're, we're really, we're trying to hone our skills. Thanks to the wonderful direction of Dick Van Gelder and um, Roland Holsinger, Dick is our general chair, who, who has kind of worked with the community, within the community, to develop grassroots efforts to, to have volunteerism from the community come out and help these uh, missions. And I tell you, Dick is a, is a he's godsend. There's no other way to describe it. Uh, Roland Holsinger is our, is our dental director, and Roland and Dick together are the dynamic duo. They have managed to take this mission of mercy, and it's, you know, to, to orchestrate something this large is hard. To orchestrate something, something that is the largest mission of mercy in the state of Maryland is an astronomical task, and they've done such a wonderful job. I, I couldn't, nobody could have done it without them. Well, I know I met them because mm -hmm. I actually brought some nursing students over. Yep. Um, your wife plays an integral part in this as a she nursing did. faculty here mm -hmm. at SU, so mm -hmm. I brought some students over, mm -hmm. and the energy there was just unbelievable. Well, it's and incredible. I mean, you look at not only we had nursing, we had we had over over sixty nurses. Over sixty nurses came and helped with with the mission. We had we had optometrists, we had ophthalmologists, we had physicians. Uh, uh, Clark Willis from the from the ER at PRMC played an intro role in this. We had um, Jim Cockey from the health department played a role in this. We had um, a, a, over 100 dentists. We had um, w over close to 100 hygienists, I believe. We had um, pretty much every specialty in dentistry that I know of represented there. Um, and it was just a wonderful thing. And the community support was unbelievable. And we had people feeding individuals. We had people you know, that, were, that were just making sure. Uh, we had a comfort core that when people were nervous or upset that we would have people come that are trained to help them through, through difficult times. You know, dentistry, a lot of folks don't like to see the dentist. Hopefully they, they, don't, they, don't, like, they don't dislike me, but they don't, they don't like right. the dentistry necessarily. It's an anxiety issue for Absolutely. some. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. I know, it was, it was quite impressive, and I think the spirit of collaboration there, bringing together all various facets of the community to make this event happen, yeah. which it, it goes over how many days? And it's a, We usually set up on Thursday night, and it, the, the mission is actually Friday and Saturday, and then we, we clean everything up Saturday night and have to be out of there by uh, Saturday at dinner time or so. So it's, it's a really a two-day safety net event. And uh, like you say, you know, the community, I would say the thing I keep hearing in my endeavors around the state and talking to other folks who have been to many of these is that the community support here on the Eastern Shore is unbelievable. Um, I don't want to say it's better than other parts of the state, but I, I will tell you, to have the, the, the people come out to help neighbors that are in need is, is incredible. And, you know, and, and some of the neighbors that we're seeing, we have about 40% of the population of the patients that we saw at this last Mission of Mercy uh, were, were from Delaware. And you know, it's, uh, we're, we're helping our neighbors as well. I mean, it's not only the community here, but we had, we had over fif 15 counties, I believe. Um, pretty much every county in the state of Maryland had someone come to this Mission of Mercy that, that were treated. Um, and you know, if you look at stats, just in the state of Maryland alone, we, the Eastern Shore is by far the most need needy. We're, we're the ones that, if you look at actual numbers of, uh, of, of dental resources available versus um, you know, income and a lot of different factors, uh, us in Western Maryland have always been the two areas that have been earmarked in the state as being the, the, the most in need of services like this. Isn't this the largest Mission of Mercy in the state of Maryland? Yes, it is. Um, as a uh, Coalfield has the, there's a Mid-Maryland Mission of Mercy that, that was very close this time. Uh, they had their first mission last year, and I think they saw around 1,200. I think we saw around 12, a little over 1,200 patients. But, you know, it doesn't matter. It, right. if, you, if you treat, you know, one, that's one person that needed to have treatment done to. Exactly. So. I mean, it's, it's, it's very impressive. Um, also, I wanted to mention I was there that Thursday morning, mm -hmm. and people were lining up already. You know, yeah. the day yeah. before. Yeah, we're getting better at that. You know, the first time we actually were in a position uh, to turn away about two thousand patients. We treated about a thousand. We turned away two thousand. Oh, 
So this time, again, a, as we do more of these, we, we hone our skills, we get better and better. And security there um, was actually keeping an eye on tracking the patients lining up. So this time, I don't think we turned away that many, but what we did, we, we, we would control the patients. We'd let them know that rather than stand in line for a day and a half and not be treated, we try to get out there and, and, you know, and, and control that to some degree anyway. It's always hard. It's always hard to, to we can, there's only so many days and so many hours and so many volunteers and so much money to do this. Right. I know it's very intensive, you know, those it two is. days it trying is. to see patients in a very efficient way. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of money, it does take a, it takes a village, it takes people, and it takes money. It so does. It I know does, you uh, have to, can only do these things every two years because it's such an event to plan and the money that you need to. It is. And the volunteers, I mean, you know, we, we again, Dick Van Gelder, fundraising efforts, uh, um, we had a fifty thousand dollar grant this time around from Care First, which which was a, another godsend. It helped get the mission of mercy really off the ground this time. Um, but just individual donors, um, you know, c people in the community in the community contributing to this is uh, outstanding. And to think that all this 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 mission started um, several years ago around the table. Uh, there was myself and other dentists and our families, and we were trying trying to come up with a way that we could. Uh, integrate or bring the mission of mercy to the eastern shore and it, uh, it all started over a pizza so i'm thinking if you know if if, <laughs> if, really? if two dentists and a, and a you know a couple of, of kids can get together and plan something like this yeah i would encourage anybody out there that's thinking about any kind of mission work to do it just follow your heart and see what you can do well, let's not be remiss in mentioning that you're an integral part of all this as well getting oh, it's, this it's, all going and it's, it's just a huge undertaking yeah well, it's uh, it's it, it's been it's been a, it's been a journey and it's been a lot of fun. It really has. Well, I think rewarding. we wanted to make people more aware of what goes into this. So we mm -hmm. actually took some footage and such of the setup and the event itself. So talk to us about what actually goes into um, the the setup of it and getting mm -hmm. it all organized. And how far out are you beginning this process? Like, have you already started planning for 2017 now? <laughs> We're still or trying to recuperate. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll usually start a, a, about a year in advance. Um, our mission and the larger missions in the state. We use a, uh, 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 we re rent our equipment from America's Care Foundation, which is a large um, business, I guess, out in the Midwest. Um, we have to call and reserve the equipment, and they, we, re we rent 100 chairs at a time, basically. 100 dental chairs. 100 dental chairs, and, and also other stuff that support the mission. Uh, in addition, Maryland State Dental Association, we had a HRSA grant given to us while we applied for it. It's probably been about five years ago now, and with that, we actually bought 20 dental units, complete dental units. So with the equipment and the with the dental chairs, the equipment and, and plus all the other supplies too. So what's mm -hmm. happened in the state is that we will we'll make application to make sure we can have all the dental chairs and stuff set up for the from the Americans Care Foundation. We will coordinate it with Maryland State Dental Association through the Charitable Education Foundation. And that's how, kind of what gets the ball rolling. That usually starts about a year, maybe a year and a month in advance. Um, and we, we kind of take our time until about six months before the actual mission. Uh, that's when things get really busy and hectic. Uh, we, we start fundraising usually about a year uh, in advance. Um, and this last mission, we had to raise over $150,000 for the last mission uh, to, to take place. And, uh, and realistically, um, yeah, that's probably a, a target figure for us, somewhere between, between $100,000 and $200,000 to run one of these events efficiently. Uh, but but it's it's coming along really well. The community foundation has been integral in helping us with the fundraising um, from the very beginning, as well as some larger supporters that we always try to acknowledge during the events as well. Uh, but it, it, it's um, you know again it, it all falls back on the direction of the, of the dental of the dental lead and the community lead to kind of get the ball rolling and get the two groups together. And I think they really pulled off a great uh, great mission this time. Yeah. So on that Thursday morning, just mm -hmm. to get to the nuts and bolts yep. of it, you're. Yep. Unloading the chairs, We're, putting them together, yeah. putting them out on the floor, you know. A, a tractor trailer shows up on Wednesday night with everything from the America's Care Foundation. The two trailers are brought down from Maryland State Dental Association, uh, usually Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Uh, this, I think we started about 9 o'clock uh, this time. We start unloading all the trucks with forklifts. Um, we start setting the, the, the dental clinic up. The lines have to be plumbed. Everything has to be connected. The computer systems get set up in the front, and it is, it's, it's a very hectic 24 hours. It so, is. I, uh, I couldn't believe yeah. how orchestrated it was, you yeah. know, and you don't even think about how you have to lay those lines for the, the electric and the water and, yeah. you know, people, you just don't yeah. think about it. And it's again, just there all, the next day. All volunteerism. That's what amazes mm -hmm. me about this area is that, you know, people just come out to help. And the, at this Mission of Mercy, things were set up Thursday night. The first patients were being screened for the actual event, 3 o'clock or 3.30 in the morning on Oh, that on early Friday up. morning, yeah, because we have to screen enough patients to get so that the clinic can, you know, get up and going by six o'clock in the morning, and. Uh, 
then it's continuous through the Friday night we worked until about 930 on Friday and then Saturday we ended up finishing up around dinner time. So. And just uh, let's just talk about the layout again you have the major part of the, that mm -hmm. big room of the Civic Center which is where all the procedures are going on. Right. Then you have another area where you do the screening mm -hmm. and then I saw there was like a vision where the glasses were set up I mean tell there, us about that. There's a vision there's a vision Dr. Debbie Steele uh, was instrumental in setting up the vision side this time as um, uh, we she she brought tons of tons of glasses. We're trying to integrate that better into the into the mission for the next next go round. Um, what happens is the patients are screened, histories are taken. They have the option, I guess, of having of having the vision screening done. Um, on the flip side, on the other side of the civic center, we actually had a pharmacy set up on the on the opposite side, and uh, so we had we had everything. We had a vision screening. We had pharmacy on one side. We had medical screening on the other side, and we had kind of the main event on the floor, which was all the dental needs that were being taken care of. Laboratories, dental laboratories, got involved with this. Donated over thirty five thousand um, dollars. A friendship labs up in Baltimore. Just a, just it's 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 incredible what happens. What about on um, the medical screening? Like who is. You, you must screen people before you put them under absolutely, the possibility absolutely. for different, like what kind of procedures did you do first? Okay. And then we'll talk about the screening that's required of who can and can't well, get those procedures. The procedures at, at the Mission University are really designed to treat the urgent needs. We're, we're, we're t our, our, our number one focus is to alleviate pain. Okay, so um, we, did, we did a lot of oral surgery, a lot of extractions. Uh, we always have a, a triage area, a dental triage area, meaning that we're we're, we're identifying the, the most important things to deal with. A lot of these folks have multiple needs and we can't address them. And that's something we had to make a decision to, for this mission of mercy. We, we came up with the term one and done. In other words, we're, we're gonna try to limit it to one or two procedures um, so that we can see more, more, more patients and, and alleviate more pain. So the um, highest priority the issue. The highest priority, yes. When so you look at a mouth or. You got it. And, and we're looking specifically for infection, things that, that could, you know, um, there's, a, there's a correlation between, between dental abscesses and, and brain abscesses. So we're we're looking for things to, we're alleviating the, the pain and suffering and getting, addressing the most important issues first. Uh, but after we took them through screening, then they either went to restorative, which are fillings, okay? They either had teeth taken out, which is oral surgery, or we, we did do some small individual tooth flippers in the front, again, to help people maintain you know, they a smile. So that they can, what? Um, they're, well, they're, they're called they're called <laughs> interim partial dentures. Okay. What it is, it's nothing more than, than a single tooth replacement, or sometimes two teeth in the front, so so that if we had to take a front tooth out, we could replace it with something with. So okay. somebody would walk out with a tooth in their mouth. Would that be a uh, permanent solution? Uh, it it is. It, it can be, but usually the ones we're making at, at these missions are are something that you know are designed maybe for for six months to a year. I've seen them last for. Ten years, I've seen them fail after six months, but it's it's at least they'll they'll walk out with something better than what they when like they walked in. Gap in Absolutely, yeah. and we had hygiene. There, we had uh, people were having their teeth cleaned. We had eye vision screening, eyeglasses, um, and and general health screening. And this time in the uh, in the medical screening side of things, we uh, were actually screening for for diabetes. We we had um, um, some diabetic literature there available. Um, we, 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 were, we were not able to do what we wanted to in medical screening this year because there's certain licensing requirements at the state of Maryland, which we're going to be, you know, we've had such wonderful support for this mission in Annapolis. We've had all of our, all of our local legislators um, have came out in full support of this. So we're going to be talking to those legislators probably um, with the next Dennis Day, which is in February, about maybe helping us trying to get a CLIA license for the Eastern Shore of Maryland um, or, and probably for the whole mom effort in the state of Maryland. Uh, we should be able to come up with a way to go to individual mom events and at least check people for, for sugar uh, and maybe even do some simple INR screening, which is to make sure that they don't bleed when you do procedures on them. They're for yeah, safety. Isn't that important? It tends to it's, be an It's issue. very important. It's very important. Well, this all is just such a wonderful event, and it would be great if you could not only address the oral health needs, but you're also screening for diabetes and high blood pressure, which are very prevalent problems. Yeah across the country and on the shore. So it's just a fantastic thing. I was so impressed. I couldn't help out the last time, but this time I came and was just amazed at, you know, the coordination of the event and the volunteerism. Well, you know, we're always looking for more leads. So maybe ne maybe the next time, maybe you can come and be a lead and play a role in the medical screening side of things. Sure. There you go. <laughs> we have that on camera. All right. All right. <laughs> um, I know you wanted to mention some other events upcoming because there are people that will go to all the various events mm -hmm. in the state to get their one procedure done yeah. and then go to another event. Okay. So um, I know you said there's some other things coming up during the year 2015 that people might be able to 
Check out. There absolutely are. Um, the next Mission of Mercy event will be held in Western Maryland. Uh, that will be held in October of this year. Um, and if you want to find out more about that, you can go to the Maryland State Dental Association website, and they will. Uh, there, there's always a link there to Mission of Mercies, and they can re they can direct you with the time of the event and the date of the event. Um, in November of this year, we're having a very special event. Um, the American Dental Association, which is uh, the dentist general organization here in the United States uh, is, is having its national meeting in Washington, D.C. There's going to be another Mission of Mercy event held in November during that meeting. Um, and this is becoming a part of the American Dental Association where every, every time we have a, made, a national meeting now, there is a mom event held in concert with, with the national meetings. So we're... Uh, we're, we're, we're well, that's wonderful to see a national and state organization taking yeah. the lead in serving the underserved because it's it's yeah. very important. I know oral health is so important to general health, and it's just great to have this event here that brings people together too. Yeah. Positive spirit. Yeah, and yeah, we're getting there. Well, again, Greg, just such an impressive undertaking and event that occurred here um, that served Wicomico County and surrounding areas, and you know, just a fabulous job. And I know. I know you can't thank everybody by name, but I know you want to give one last shout out to the community. Absolutely. I mean, for all of the, of the, of the professionals, the dentists, the pharmacists, the nurses, the dental staff, the individuals who played a part in this, the community's members, and, and this, you know, I can't say enough about, about Wicomica County. And any, any volunteer that came to help us with this Mission of Mercy, um, from, from the vendors to the, you know, to the labs, um, it, it is greatly appreciated, and the underserved population is much better today because of it. And I'd also like to thank you, Mary, for covering this event for us. Um, you and PAC-14 and Craig, and it's, it's really, it's important, it's important what you do to, to disseminate the word, to let people know that these events are coming and what's happening. I guess PR is good. Free PR it's is good. very good. It's of course, good. it creates a demand, however, but yeah. it seems like you're gearing up every two years. You gear up for even more and more people to be served somehow through this event. Yeah, we're going to keep trying. That's great. Yeah. And the you know, oral care is so important, and then adding the medical piece to it, which you hope to expand. Absolutely. And thanks again, Greg, for being on the program to share your, your vision and your story of success. Well, thank you. It's been great. And thank you for joining us on Focus on Health here on PAC-14. And we'll end the program with some footage from this 2015 Eastern Shore Mission of Mercy event.